Julia. I love you to see you. Hello, Mia. How are you? <laughs> okay. I didn't dare come in. I thought that we might, you know, get some trouble because of the party. That's no problem. I'm so glad to be here away from my crazy husband. I'm really looking forward to some very fine music. Oh, thank you very much. Hello. Thank you. Oh, Nina! <laughs> Everybody knows your name now. Oh, I must take a picture of you. <laughs> Just stand there. Okay. Personalised names are available now, so long as you pay for them. <laughs> Okay, there you go. Perfect. Lovely. I've just recorded this for you. Oh, excellent. Fantastic. We'll play it now. Yes. Julia, <laughs> what a surprise. Come in. Peter, I came to know the truth. You're my real brother and you're not confiding in me anymore. You've been acting very strangely lately. I want you to tell me all about this inheritance. Julia, there's nothing to hide. Yes, Mum inherited the castle. You don't have to worry. Whatever I get, you'll get the same. Look, I'll look after your interests, even if you're abroad. You can be sure of that. I always think of you. I was the one to introduce you to my friend Lorna. How could I forget? She's such a dream. <laughs> Fantastic. I look forward to meeting this professor. Don't worry, you'll meet him. He'll be here soon. But I have to stay in Malta for a while until we solve this mystery. What mystery? I can't tell you anything now. I will later. Well, this mystery, does it involve me? I need to speak to you before you leave. I'm going to miss my plane. Mum. I'm so sorry. I have been so abrupt lately. I've been so stressed out. Filippo has left me for a younger girl. And now he's back hoping that I'm inheriting money. Well, I've thrown him out. I think that's the best decision you could have ever made. I never liked the man anyway. But tell me about your career. Oh, my career. I'm so satisfied with my career, Mom. How old of you? I always knew you had talent. But what's really bothering you? Well, is it true that Peter is inheriting a big sum of money? I don't know anything about that. But now you've got the castle, you can sell it and make some money. But John, Peter and Joan, they've, they've all been trying to sell it. I don't know anything about that. I thought you knew. You phoned Peter every day. Yes, but the only thing Peter ever spoke to me about was that somebody was trying to kill me. And then he found out it wasn't true. And then somebody actually did try and kill me. Are you suspicious about anyone? No, I'm just scared. The sooner I'm back in England, the happier I'll be. Jerry is going to send his solicitor to sort the whole business out with this Dr. Fennec. I'm just so worried. I have no idea who's trying to kill me or why. I'd like to speak to you. It's not what you think. Well, darling, I have nothing against you. You were married to my brother, and obviously, you had to do what he wanted you to do. I'm still married to him. I didn't sign the divorce deed. Oh, yes. Filippo said he can get his divorce within six months if he stays in his own country, whether I sign or not. I know it's true, but I'm risking that. I don't think John can stay away that long from his island. And why would you be hoping that John is coming back? I've recently heard that you are now officially Dr. Fennec's mistress. Not exactly his mistress. You know, your brother John left me for Mandy. Oh, yes, yes, yes. She's having his baby. <laughs> I do understand you, sweetheart. I've always liked you, in fact. But I've always been very, very cautious not to get pregnant. No, no. I didn't take any precautions. I desperately wanted a baby. I visited two gynecologists. I've done all the tests. They said there is nothing wrong with me. He cheated me. Oh, that baby isn't his. Well, I shouldn't worry if I were you. It's not the end of the world, you know. So nice of you to want to meet my parents. 
well, working in a hotel, you hear all sorts of gossip. And the waiters and the other managers told me that since you've been staying here for a very long time, you and your family, you have a delightful mother and a very, very charming father. And they never mentioned he or my brothers and sisters? Well, to tell you the truth, they did say something to me about you. They told me that you're very, very beautiful, but also very talented. Do you know that in the olden days, a man had to speak to the parents before he could even talk to the lady he loves? Yeah, times have changed, thank goodness. Yes, they have. Forgive me, I couldn't think of a better excuse to talk to you so that you wouldn't brush me off. I forgive you. I'll tell you all about myself and my family, but then you have to tell me all about yourself. <laughs> Forget about your family. I'm only interested in you. Tell me, when did you divorce your Italian husband? Only a few months ago. It wasn't any problem in Italy. I suppose he left you with a good allowance. Oh, I got nothing out of him. Filippo has nothing to offer. I just wanted him out of my life. What do you mean he has nothing to give? He's a doctor. Oh, yes, but he spends all his earnings on prostitutes and gambling. He must have been mad to ignore you. So how did you cope? Well, it wasn't easy, but I managed. That is one of the reasons why I didn't want to have any children from him. Philippe was really crazy, you know. Was your family able to help you uh, financially? Oh well, yes, mother, of course. Jerry helped me out a number of times. It was only in the last few years that mom could afford it. She had two children from her first marriage, John and Sylvia, and they also adopted John. If they already had two kids, why would they adopt another girl? Well, at that time, Mom used to do some voluntary work, helping out single mothers with their children. There happened to be one particular one from Eastern Europe. She was sick, eventually died, leaving a son and a daughter, who was Joan. According to what Mom told us, Joan used to hang on to her skirt all the time, and she eventually grew very fond of her. And she adopted her when she was 10. What a very touching story. So who adopted the son? I don't know. I wasn't even born then. Mum told us the story when we were very young. I don't remember anything else. We grew up thinking that Joan was also our sister, just like John and Sylvia. We never talked about it. Tell me more about it. It sounds very interesting. Well... When Mom's first husband died, she met my father. She had me and Peter. We're twins. Jerry's not my real father, but he's the best thing that has ever happened to Mom. Do you know your father at all? Oh, yes, of course. He left us when I was 10 years old. We were all so heartbroken. He never came back. Have you been in touch with him since? No. But Mum tried to look for him, and she eventually found out that he had run away with his secretary. Well, she has tried to keep up a good face for all our sakes. I've caught her several times, crying though. It's been very hard for her trying to raise five children. I understand you've been through a tough time, but how did you become rich? Rich? I don't think of myself as rich. Well, when John finished secondary school, he emigrated to England. He found a good job and he used to send almost all his money to mum. Very soon, Sylvia and Joan followed. And they also had good jobs and they sent money to support us as well. I myself was lucky enough to win a scholarship to study music in Italy. And when I left, Peter left for Amsterdam. So you all left your mother? Oh, I know it sounds cruel, but she herself encouraged us to go abroad and find a better life. Mind you, we kept in touch. It's all the better because we are more independent now. I'm curious. Is your father still alive? I don't know. And I don't care. I hate him for leaving us. And I will never forgive him. You should find out what happened to him. Perhaps he became rich and you have a right to inherit him. Oh, I don't need his money. Unfortunately.